the best experience that I can have in relationship to an audience is when somebody feels seen by something. Those are the movie experiences that I've felt when I've seen something that felt like my life. It makes you feel less alone. It makes There's just something that happens that, that, that frees your soul in some way. It's one of the reasons that movies that are, um, you know, writers and directors who are plumbing their own emotional depths are, I value a lot more than things that are, you know, we have a lot of entertainment. I don't think we're in short supply of that. So the fact that people, when people work in that way, it's much more inspiring to me. So I'm very excited to moderate today's conversation. One of our guests is en route. We'll be here any minute, but in the meantime, please give a big hand to star Alton Ehrenreich. Okay, so, so like, I, <laughs> <laughs> right, correct. So, so I had I, a guy at a valet yesterday came up to me and he went, "I mean this as a compliment, but you're pathetic." <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you read this script for the very first time, uh, written and directed by Chloe Daman, like, and you're looking and reading Luke and reading like what what he does. Yeah. How do you sort of? start to approach playing this character without judging him? Um, well, that's that. That's the job, is trying not to, is you have to kind of uh, force yourself not to. Um, but something that helped is, you know, when I've read scripts before where you have a character that you feel the writer is really judging, you know, uh, it makes it almost impossible. And in this, it felt like Chloe was really invested in writing him as a um, very flawed but very human person who ends up doing unspeakable things. And so she was, um, you know, really intent on, she talked a lot about his pain and what he was, uh, the circumstances he was put in and that humanistic approach to this, which was unlike other scripts that I had read, around similar themes um, made it, you know, attractive. So I'm really curious. So you're reading this and you're going like, okay, I can feel that she's she's trying to not judge Luke. And you said you, you've read other things where you, you know, you feel like the writer maybe is. What is it about the writing where you can tell the difference? It's a really good question. It's a really a, intangible thing. You just feel, uh, it's almost like meeting people and you feel whether somebody has sort of a compassion for, uh, a person or not. And you felt that, you know, it's in the, I think, you know, one hallmark of that is the psychological detail, the, the way in which she understood through the writing, the, the whole movie is this big sort of escalation, you know, or in a very slow grueling way. And, uh, and she, uh, you could feel her really understand what he, you could feel that she was writing. She was sort of using someone, a real person, or maybe it's an amalgamation of people and accessing them in the way she wrote this character. So, so what came first talking to Chloe or reading the script? I read the script. Um, and then I spoke with Chloe. Yeah. What was that first conversation with her? Like after you read the script yeah. for the first time? Um, really encouraging, you know, like I've, you know, uh, not worked with many first time filmmakers. And when you do it, you're taking a risk. You don't know. And, you know, like I've worked with people who've made movies for 30 years who melt down on set. And so somebody who's taking on their first film and it's in Serbia and she was dealing with all kinds of production challenges at that time. <clears throat> um, her sense of authority, her sense of vision for this, her kind of like, resolve to make this no matter what happened. And while I was talking to her about it, there were lots of different challenges that arose for her in the film. And I watched her tackle those with this, um, moxie that, uh, made it, uh, made me feel really trust, trust her basically. So, so after you, and this is a lot of times writer directors will meet with their cast and then after they meet with their cast after they sort of like go over some just further 
evaluation or evolution of the characters, yeah. they'll do some rewriting after that. Did that happen with Fair Play? No, not a ton. That's a good question. I mean, uh, it's funny. You know, I've always, it's a weird analogy and certainly not uh, comparing ourselves to them, but there was something always about the collaboration between De Niro and Scorsese that felt like it was born out of the fact that they grew up with this same in sort of the same neighborhood. And one of the things that was exciting about working with Chloe is that she went to a high school that was very similar to mine in Los Angeles. We both went to NYU. We're both almost exactly the same age. And she was writing about I mean, you know, the film takes place in Wall Street, but it's really her writing about experiences in show business. Um, she was writing about a kind of these issues, but in a historical moment and a kind of guy that was very much of our generation. So I just understood how she was writing it. And um, and then she did this wonderful thing where, uh, you know, I love rehearsal, um, especially when you're meeting a, a, a couple um, who've been together for a while or like when I made the short, like a family, um, that you want, you know, a lot of times you meet, like I did a movie where I met the person playing my mom, like the day we're shooting. And my first scene was how could you've done this? You've betrayed us. And I didn't even know what it was. Um, and you're, and, and you don't have the time to kind of get to know the person. And so this basically, uh, she afforded us these three days where we did rehearsal, where we improvised. We rehearsed almost every single scene in the movie. Um, I'm sorry. It was like a week uh, on set. And then we also, uh, she let us do these rehearsals where we improvised our backstory because, you know, like you have a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you know, you have this shared history. So to try to build that. So we did the day that it was Emily's first day at work and I was giving her a tour of the office and showing her where her desk was and flirting with her and whatever. We did the first time we said, I love you to each other in bed in the apartment, you know, and it allowed Phoebe and I um, to develop this trust um, and this kind of shared past, but also for like the unit to sort of meld together because to take on the intensities of some of the scenes, we needed that sort of trust that we had each other. That is a luxury yeah, to true. have that kind of backstory yeah. and, and they're not even in the film. Totally. And a lot of films don't do it because it's hard to point to it's, you know, it doesn't like from a number standpoint, you, well, this you're together, but we're not shooting. So what's the point of that? But it actually financially makes a lot of sense because it means that you're not figuring out the scenes while there are 50 people waiting around who are getting paid by the minute. And it, I think, expedites a lot of that stuff. I just did it for a week last week and it, it, it just it makes on set life a lot quicker. You don't have to learn, you know. Well, there, there is, uh, there is a big reason, you know. I, I, Eleven months after I saw the film for the first time, that explains so much about why it feels like such a tragedy to see this relationship fall apart the way it does in such a lived-in way. Uh, but you know, when when it came to, you know, you're working with a first-time director, uh, you're working with an actor who's making her second feature film, Phoebe. Right. So, so the first time that the two of you met. You know, what was that like? You know, what did you pick up on that first meeting that informed your approach to Luke and, and Emily? I think the main thing that I was really struck by, and this might be her. Did that might be her? Did dun, she walk dun, in? Dun. Is that her? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. That is Phoebe Dinever. Phoebe Dinever. <laughs> <laughs> that is her cue. Hi, I'm Scott. Nice, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> so, so the question was, Phoebe, me. Yeah. the question was, and this is perfect, uh, the first time that you two met, yes. what was it about that first meeting that informed the way that you were both going to play the relationship between Luke and Emily? And, and, and uh, Alden, you were just about to answer that. <laughs> yes. Well, do you want to start? No, I want to hear your answer. I'm easy. I need to ease into it. Sure, sure, second. sure. Of course. Um, <laughs> I, I think the thing uh, I'll I'll pretend you're not here as I say this, but I think the thing that was very um, uh, striking when we met that I really 
uh, found, that really inspired me about us being able to do this with Phoebe was uh, the fact that she had this uh, availability, this emotional availability and this just honestness and truthfulness. And you pick up on that real fast when you work with people. And so for a piece like this where every scene is in a way, you know, a kind of a cage match between us, um, working with someone who's who's doing that in a truthful way and really living it and bringing themselves to it is the only way I was really interested in doing the film. And I was just really inspired by the fact that she had that gift. Okay, Phoebe. So, so your take on that, how did that first meeting like help you pick up on, on, on how you were going to develop that relationship beyond what just, what was just on the page? Yeah. I mean, I think when I met Chloe over zoom, um, originally there was just, there was so much that I related um, to Emily with and to Chloe's story. And we just connected in a very honest way about who Emily was and her journey. And then I guess meeting Alden for the first time, it just, our conversations around the characters and what we wanted to do with the movie was, it just felt like we were both coming from a very honest place and both wanting to, you know, do right by Chloe. Uh, and reading through the scenes, there was obviously kind of an instant connection there and a chemistry and it just, you know, that feeling you get when you're working with another actor and you just feel a, a buzz and an excitement and like, I just can't wait to, to actually do this and, and be on set. Um, well, did you, did you feel that way just when you like reading Chloe's uh, script? And, and reading Emily and reading that that journey from vulnerability to empowerment, you know, this is I, I, your second feature film. Did you just go like, this is an actor's dream. I cannot wait to dive into this. Oh God, yeah. I mean, I be practically begged her to give me the role. I was <laughs> on my knees. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it was a, a dream. And I read the script and I knew I had to like fight for it and try and persuade her to give me the role. Um, because it was just, it felt so fresh as well. I'd never read anything like it and I'd never read anything, you know, that just spoke so honestly about a, a female experience in that way. So that was just so exciting to dive into. Um, it's always fun finding something so unique and with, you know, Chloe had such a, a she just knew exactly what she wanted. I was reading an interview with Chloe and uh, she said that when it came to casting you, she knew she had the right Emily because you related on a personal level to this film and to Emily's experiences the same way that Chloe did through her experiences that inspired her to write the screenplay. Uh, how did this reach, reach you beyond the fact that it's just like a really juicy role and a, a thriller that's very, very provocative, but how did it touch you much, much deeper than that? I think it, uh, originally when I first read it, it spoke to, it opened up a door in my brain that I ha hadn't, like, I think because, you know, and th this is the thing that I am so excited about is, is, is telling f stories through a female lens because there's so much, there's so, th like, this is so obviously from a female perspective, you know, even from the, like, the first scene when we're in the bathroom and she comes on, Emily comes on a period and that whole, like it's so seen through a female gaze and immediately I was excited by that. Um, and I've forgotten your question. <laughs> um, <laughs> but your answer is so great. Like, it, like yeah, keep going, right? Um, no, uh, uh, what was it that touched you personally? Um, just, I think, yeah, that and, 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 you know, I think like I have so many girlfriends and women in my life who I like see a story, like part of Emily's story in them, whether it's, you know, being surrounded by a very male uh, working place or, or just relationships that they've been in. And, um, and equally that, you know, I've experienced very male working environments and, and relationships, um, that kind of echo some things, um, you know, the, the dynamic that Luke and Emily have not quite as extreme luckily, but, um, definitely touch on, on, on what they go through in the movie. So yeah, it was, I, I connected to it on so many levels. So, so 
Alden told us how the rehearsal process was performing scenes that weren't even in the film in a way to establish their relationship. So when the you know when the, you know you know what hit the fan, it would it would have much much bigger stakes. Can you talk about how prepping and that that rehearsal helped you and helped the two of you. I mean, I just really want to, for a sec, sing about intimacy coordinators because I think they're really valuable. Um, I've never not worked with an intimacy coordinator. Uh, and it, I, I think it just like, it was, it gives you like a safe place. And it also kind of, because we, we know what we're doing and we know where we need to get to, um, it, it just enabled us to like have a, a touching stone that we could, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but it, it really does open you up in a way. Like it actually gives you more freedom um, within the scenes to to go to the places that feel scary because you're not thinking in the back of your mind, oh, is it like, am I, maybe he doesn't, you know, those things aren't going through your mind as you're shooting it. So you're able to be really in the moment. And yeah. so I, I think that was a really important aspect. Um, and yeah, just having a week rehearsal period is always a joy and a luxury, a luxury, totally. but a yeah. necessity for this, I felt particularly, but yeah, it was, it was. A luxury. So, you know, again, I've been waiting like 11 months to have this conversation with you <laughs> since I saw it at Sundance at the library, which is, it is a library. Um, but what were the, the unique acting challenges that each of you had to do to, that informed your approach. Start with you on that. Well, I think that the just the intensity of it. I mean, it was unique in its in its um, how intense it was for such a long duration. And you know, Chloe's talked about like uh, there's they were like looking for light scenes to put at the front of the schedule and there weren't any basically. Um, so they, they, <laughs> they, we just were having to sustain that. We shot the film in Belgrade in Serbia uh, in the, in the height of uh, winter and Omicron. So we were very, um, yeah, they did a good job. I'm amazed Holy that, shit. yeah, everybody buys it as New York. You're from New York. It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought that was New York. Right, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, yeah wow. exactly. So being in that environment in that way, um, uh, I think contributed to that in a good way. We were living and eating and breathing this this film. So um, probably that. What about for you, Phoebe, the, the unique challenges, you know, compared to the other work you've done, uh, you know, that, that stretched you for this, for Emily? Definitely the, in it, the intensity of it and like winding down after a day of like uh, Emily's adrenaline is always, and Luke's always so high in the film. So keeping that level of adrenaline going all day and then trying to get home and relax and go to sleep and know that the next day you're going to be back up here um, was a lot and and actually I didn't get much sleep by the end of the shoot because it's so it's yeah and we we shot six day weeks too um so it was it was really very intense I cannot believe you didn't shoot this in New York I swear to God I was like we did two days in New York <laughs> oh wow yeah. yeah so so um you know like Chloe DeMond's her her first feature she wrote and directed the film uh what is it about Chloe that makes her a great actor's director <laughs> um I would say just 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 how she knew exactly what she wanted from the very beginning and how safe it feels um to be working with a director that you know is is going to push you until they get the take the the best take yeah. um and yeah, you just knew that she was always going to tell you the truth and um, push you and get you to the place that you needed to be in order for the scene, every the scene to work and for the beat to work. Also, she just had the whole edit in her brain already. Like you just knew that you were in very, very safe hands with Chloe. What about for you? Yeah, I think she, you know, the sense of command that she had over the script, I mean, over the set makes you feel a kind of a safety. Um 
And then she delighted in what we were doing. I mean, it's one of the reasons that it's great to work for a writer director because you know that they on some level love the material. Um, and so she just was a wonderful audience in a sense. And this is some of the great filmmakers I've gotten to work with. They're very much the same way. They're laughing. I mean, Chloe, Chloe laughs a lot <laughs> at yeah. scenes yeah. that no one laughs at. <laughs> um, you know it's she good when she's laughing. In it. She's like, we're, we're doing like a terrible, horrible thing. And she's like, me. <laughs> um, so that but that makes you you know it makes you feel good and 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 she also just uh uh had a desire that i've had for a long time in working on something to be able to do takes that are really um free really free you always get to do one like fuck it take not always but a lot of times where you get to kind of fly off the handle and she was uh really like to do several of those and push them further and further yeah well i'm just curious if one of those takes let me back up a second so when i knew i was doing this i, I wanted to get here early and and sit in the back and watch people react because there are a lot of amazing scenes shocking scenes uh one of which I forget. I might have been you. I think it's your voice when when Luke goes in and begs Campbell and gets on his knees, where everybody went, "Oh no!" Was that you? Uh, I, but that happened at Sundance too. Like I just remember people going, "Oh my god!" Like it was so. So was that? And it give me was that like a scene where you got to you know do it maybe a couple of times or? I got to do it. I got to do it a few times. Um, my memory with that is I don't think we improvise or change. I mean, the getting on my knees was in the script and, and uh, that was just a scene. That scene probably speaks to the fact that Chloe had a really good feeling for what was behind this, what motivated this person to do what they did. And um, and so that was just a, a well-written seeing that you know on, on when we did it you know yeah you 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 felt everybody kind of do that you know uh the other one and there's this you know there's a few uh is when emily's out with the guys uh like you just feel so much of of emily's pain without you, you it's all her expression her her bio her her posture um you know and then she you know really just like you know sort of takes over the scene from the guys. What was like filming that one at the nightclub? Really fun. I mean, <laughs> we had a great time. Uh, yeah, we were in a Serbian strip club in the middle of the day. Um, <laughs> so was I, but a, a different one. Uh, and yeah, it was it, it was really fun. And those. Um, Actors in real life are, are, are really lovely people. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it was a great, it was really great. Okay, so I want to ask about the prep that you both did, how much rehearsal you did for the engagement party, because that's a doozy. The big, at the beginning. At the, at the end. Yeah. Oh, at the end. I always mess this up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, the engagement party is different than the wedding. Um, oh, at the end. Uh Sma the bottle smashing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that in particular, I, my memory of that scene was that we were, you told me recently that we were laughing a lot, which we I didn't laughing remember. Laughing a lot. That was actually right. one of my favorite days on yeah. set. I don't, we were in such a giddy mood yeah. that day. I think we kept, it was like a Friday and we'd had a really heavy week. Right. And for some reason, this felt like a fun scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to shoot. It was like, yeah, this it was, is, I was like so excited about smashing a bottle right. over your head and like yeah. we were giggling. Yeah, it was that I remember. It was that something TV. kind of yeah punchy, and we were and we shot it as chronologically as possible, which is another thing that's great to do. It's also a luxury. Yeah, so we were we were by the time we got there all very in it, and then, you know, we'd been having these fight scenes with just that just took place with us, but this is the first one where we have a fight scene in front of a lot of people, and so to kind of take this routine so to speak that we'd gotten very familiar with over the course of 10 or 11 different scenes like that and have all these uh very nice very talented actors there um who had not seen what this was like and do that and you know and 
very small bar and try to create some actual shock and kind of chaos and upset in the room um, in a safe way, but was uh, was kind of a dark fun. Yeah. Do you, do you think that the giddiness that comes from filming a scene like this is a because as an actor you're like this is what this is all about or b because you know filming chronologically because there was so much intensity you just needed to just kind of break the ice a little bit and have some fun with it yeah i think it was a bit of both i think also i yeah i kind of forgot that this was like our first scene really with other people was it or, or i don't know it felt like it was the first time we kind of done Emily and Luke with people around us. We'd just been in an apartment arguing us too. And so to bring that energy into a room full of people is very exciting um, to bring it alive and, and have other people, you know, involved in that. It was just, it was fun. Well, what's also true is it's kind of the first time she attacks me uh, in that way. Like she's kind of more front footed and it's also Luke is, uh, uh, sort of disassociated from all the emotional intensity of it at that point, and it's sort of gone off the rails to a different place of not giving a fuck that he gets out of fairly quickly after that. But it's this little window where, you know, you get to kind of con stand up to me in a, in a sense, and then I'm also, you know, in a different place. So it was just a different energy. In it kept this. breaking as well that day. I remember your drunk performance was making me laugh so much. You do these things and I'd be like, oh my God. And it was like, it was so brilliant that I like couldn't control my laughter. So I remember that a lot. You kind of doing amazing things and me being like. <laughs> 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 Just pretending I'm, I'm there. So, so when the movie uh, was playing in theaters, uh, was playing at... Uh New York, it's on uh, like 57th and like 5th. There's a theater right there uh, behind the, uh, by the plaza. And I get this call the next day from a friend of mine who lives in New York. He says, did you see Fair Play? And I'm like, oh yeah. He says, I think that's my movie. And I said, why? And he said, my wife and I have gotten into so many fights after she got promoted and started making more money. No, no, they don't work together. They don't work together, but she, she, her responsibility increased. She started making more money. They started going to, to, to events that, that, that she was taking him to and it changed the dynamic. And I said, this is the conversation. This is what makes this film beyond just a great movie, thrilling, you know, like a, a, a extremely entertaining movie. It is also extremely provocative. So since Sundance, when it screened for the first time, what were the reactions that you started to get that you started to say, yep, this movie works? Well, for me, you know, uh, the, the, the best experience that I can have in relationship to an audience is when somebody feels seen by something. Those are the movie experiences that I've felt when I've seen something that felt like my life. It makes you feel less alone. It makes There's just something that happens that 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 frees your soul in some way. And so um, to it's one of the reasons that movies that are, um, you know, writers and directors who are plumbing the their own emotional depths are I value a lot more than things that are, you know, we have a lot of entertainment. I don't think we're in short supply of that. So, um, the, the, the fact that people, when people work in that way, it's much more inspiring to me. And what I felt that was, I didn't expect to be this clear, this fast was as soon as the film played at Sundance, I was sitting in a, um, I went, I was walking around, I went into like a little restaurant or something. And these women came up to me and said, I work at the same company as my husband and we, and no one knows that we're dating and and we live that and I make more money than and there's this kind of like gleam in her eye of of having had that experience and having seen it on film and this release of energy um particularly from the women that I talked to then so um that was that was very meaningful and more meaningful than 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 a release that I'd had for a little while at that point yeah what about for you, Phoebe? I recently was in London and and I had this. The, oh, I did a screen like a screening in London, and um, a young girl, I think she was about twenty, came up to me and said, "It's so weird. That's my 
I've just started working in in finance and that is my experience in the office like uh, and and that was really shocking to me in a way because I was like kind of, like yeah you, you can but she was like this this is my experience in the office in, to a level that was like to to a T I don't know you it just it's shocking to hear that but not at the same time, but it, it it was wild that, you know, a young 20 year old was, was feeling those things and, wow. um, related to Emily. And it, it was weird. It was like, I was meeting my real self, real version of Emily. So I, at the top of the conversation, Alden, you said that when Chloe wrote this, she based it on her experiences in show business, right? Why did she change it to the finance world? Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question for her. Um, she gets sued. <laughs> <laughs> she gets sued, probably. Right. But what about, listen, uh, what about Emily's journey? What an arc that she goes from just just trying to do so much to, to be supportive, uh, and then when she gets the promotion to, to be ambitious and, you know, go get her, which is what she should absolutely be. And trying to be sensitive to to Luke, and then ultimately just that, like, you know what, I'm doing my own thing. Good luck. I mean, the aspect of her that I was really interested in because I could really relate to it was um, just the journey of her at the beginning with Luke, very much suppressing um, her s ambition in a way, um, being very supportive of Luke. Uh, being there's a passiveness to her at the beginning, which I think a lot of women can relate to. And I think it's this thing of like, that we're taught in society that women who are kind of more passive and laid back are, are more appealing to men. And I've certainly done that in relationships before. And then I think there's a point in the film where Emily decides, you know what, I'm dropping it. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing that part anymore. I'm done. I'm going to just, I'm, I, I'm like, love me for what I am. You know, she's, she's still, she's trying to make it work, but she's, she's given up the act and she's going to just be openly ambitious and go for her goals and dreams. And he can either get on board or get off, Yeah, right. right. but she wants him to get on board. So, so one question I love to ask at the SAG After Foundation conversations is how, do you remember your lines? Because <laughs> everybody has a yeah. different method. Um, I, for a long time, would run them with people. Um, but then I found that uh, I heard somebody talking about writing them out. And so I'll, um, uh, I'll write them over and over again until uh, I get it. And, and, and at a certain point, you don't actually have to write the words. You just have to be moving the pen and rem and doing the words in your head like a song. And uh, you do it for a long time uh, until you really can go through the whole scene and do that effortlessly without having to remember. And um, that's it. That's your method. Yeah. What about your CV? I, but I just run them in my head again and again and again. I weirdly don't like running my lines with people. I can't do it, which is odd. I just, unless it's like the person that I'm going to be doing it with, I just don't want to hear it out loud until I'm there. So that, I mean, I don't, yeah. Um, so I just have to go over them in my head. And then if I have like a long passage, then I'll write that out. Okay. And one of the dangers too is if you're reading it out loud is to get stuck in readings and to get stuck in rhythms and your body, your, your body starts to memorize certain rhythms. And so if you're doing it out loud, it's good to do really wrong reads of it and re or whisper it or shout it or do it in a silly voice or whatever if you are doing that because it's a way of keeping your body from getting into sort of an automatic version of the lines which can be kind of dead inside and if i run them with someone else that, that that's exactly what it is i get this you get like a rhythm with someone else and then I, so, and then i'm like oh this is a, you know it just it over 
fills my brain. Okay, last, last question. I mean it this time. So every, every gig, every movie, every film that you do, and every performance that you give, you take something from that performance onto the next one. So what was it about making Fair Play, working with Chloe, playing Luke, that, that you know, improved your abilities as an actor? You know, I'm, I'm taking that to the next one. I, I think that a certain feeling of um, of fun, you know, and it's a weird thing. It's so intense, but to do something that was, um, it was fun, you know, and uh, uh, and 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 working with the right people was really special. It was the first time I'd done something with just kind of people in my own generation. I've worked for like a lot of very old people. Um, so <laughs> who I've loved, I've loved and learned so much, but th it, this was the rare opportunity to do that. And it was, um, yeah, when it's, when you're in an environment that's comfortable, it's, it's hard to put in words, but it's just a kind of ease that happens and a comfort and a fun. Um, yeah. All right. What are you taking with you to the next one? Yeah. I just want to speak uh, as an actor really. And just like, sorry, obviously I'm speaking as an actor, but to the actor, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I think, you know, we, there's so much rejection constantly. And I think it, it, it's always like, we're always feeling not good enough, basically. And when I read Fair Play, it felt like such a challenge and it felt like a reach. And for some reason I had the audacity to fight for it, but I think it gave me a lot of confidence as an actor, knowing that I, you know, I can do the things that I have always wanted to do. And, um, and I think, yeah, the, I think confidence, um, which is, is hard in this industry sometimes. So ladies and gentlemen, now that you've seen Fair Play, spread the word. It's right there on Netflix. It's right there. You can watch it over and over again, which I'm telling you, this is a movie that deserves to be seen over and over again. I cannot thank you all enough for being here for this very special conversation. Alden, Phoebe, thank you and bravo. Thank you.